Thrust for Tango's turning final, zero 09, full stop. Hey, thrust for Tango, Roger. Oh, wow. Okay. Didn't line it up very well, anyways. What? Oh. Hello. So I'm here at the parking lot at the airport. Um, oh, and it looks like Victor, Victor Oscar. I just caught a glimpse of Victor Oscar Tango literally just landed. Today is my first flight as an officially permitted recreational pilot permit holder, or permitted pilot, permitted pilot permit. That's exciting. Feels like it's been a long time coming. And yet somehow it feels like it went by really quickly. I don't know how that works. The plan today is for, I want to try and fly to Merritt. I'm going to try and do my first solo cross country. Uh, I'm going to go to Merritt and back. I picked the wrong way to go to Merritt and back. I'll explain later. There are some kind of scary clouds around a little bit. There are some fires that could cause some issues with visibility. Uh, so we'll see. But I hope ever got everything planned out. I got my all my flight planning done and everything, I think. So I just have to go over some stuff, make sure everything's cool. And then, yeah, we'll see. But either way, uh, my first flight as a non-student pilot. <laughs> Oh, that's wild. You join me just taxiing on Taxiway Alpha. About to take off of runway 09 on a westbound departure to Merritt. This is my first flight as a permitted pilot. And uh, it's making me a little nervous. This is, this is what I'm doing. I'm flying to Merritt just for fun. Oh. All right, let's stop, let's stop on the taxiway. There we go. Victor Oscar Tango, you can depart at your discretion. Victor Oscar Tango, lining up, 09. Roger, and are you planning to follow the Coke or Highway 5A down to Merritt? Uh, my flight plan, uh, it's been filed. I'm flying Savannah, Logan Lake on the way down. Hi, it's Paul from the future, so I should just kind of explain what's going on with my flight path here. So um, the person in the tower had asked if I was taking Highway 5 or Highway 5A. He called Highway 5 the Coke because it's short for Coquihalla, which is the name of the highway. As you can see on this map, here's Kamloops, here's Merritt, there's Highway 5, there's Highway 5A. Uh, but because I didn't know what I was doing, I decided I was going to go out west and follow this path. So from Kamloops, out west, and then south. Um, over a little place called Logan Lake. Now, the only problem with that is that the approach to the airport's a bit tricky because as you can see on this map, the airport is right next to a highway, which isn't a big deal, but the highway is right next to a mountain, which kind of is. So we'll see later how I try and get into Merritt from there. But that's essentially what I was planning on doing was going out west, going south, and then go taking the Coquihalla, taking Highway 5, following that essentially back to Camelot at the end of it. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And we'll talk more about that later when I return from the future. Back to the video. Time up. Look at that, 2 p.m., right on time. It's pretty hot today, so my airplane performance is not going to be incredible. It's going to be a pretty sluggish climbing, I think. Riley also, after he came in from the flight right before mine, kind of said it was pretty bumpy out, so um, we shall see how things go. Ooh, goodness, speaking of bumpy. I also need to make sure I uh, remind myself how to use this clock, because I'm going to have to uh, time myself to update my ETA. Basically, I need to time myself for Savannah to Logan Lake, enter the time in my spreadsheet, and that will tell me what my ETA is, and then if my ETA is way far out of, uh, well, I'll probably just call uh, Pacific Radio anyways and just say, hey, this is my ETA. Yeah, I can't, this is so surreal. I'm flying an airplane, and I'm allowed to, like, I'm, I can do it on my own. I'm a big kid now. I want to stay as safe as possible, so I want to stay over the lake, give myself as much height as possible. But I could cut the corner and just go straight over the bend of the lake, but no. I wonder if I'm supposed to make a call to say I'm leaving the frequency. Am I supposed to do that? Let me ask Riley. I gotta turn to start my timer pretty quick here. So this is the valley I'm turning down right there. The visibility is not as great as I would have hoped. So I'm gonna switch to uh, and to our frequency, and we're going to turn south. So, uh, West Kamloops Radio. West Kamloops Radio, Cessna 172, Gulf Victor Oscar Tango over Savannah at 50, 6,700 feet, correction. Uh, turning southbound toward Logan Lake. Any topics, please advise. West Kamloops traffic, Cessna 172, Gulf Victor Oscar Tango. All right, I'm going to start my timer right now. And let's head south. So my heading is supposed to be 
Uh, what's my heading supposed to be? Uh, one, one six six, roughly. Uh, one five one six, a bit farther this way. It's really hazy up there, actually. It's actually quite hazy. All right, I'm just going to throw in an extra notch of trim. Try settling for this flight. This is kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. So it's hazy because there's fires around. There's a fire over toward Ashcroft. Uh, there's actually a fire in the hills out behind me somewhere as well, I believe, a small one. But here's the thing. If it gets too bumpy, there is a speed at which you're not supposed to go faster than. Right? Like, if it gets a little bit too bumpy and then whatever, and you're worried about the plane and stuff, you have what's called your safe maneuvering speed. Now, it says here on the dash, I don't know if you can see that, maneuver speed 97 knots. That's for a fully weighed down plane, which I'm not. If the plane is not fully weighed down, if it's, if it's lighter than that, you have to, it, it actually slows that speed down. So because it's just me and the plane and some bags and my jug of water, um, my maneuvering speed is like 80 knots. So I was worried that like, if it got super, super bumpy and turbulent and stuff and I have to slow down, if I have to go 80 knots, that's going to really slow me down. Ooh, a cloud. Now, if it gets that bumpy, I'm just going back to Kamloops. I'm just going to call Pacific Radio and be like, hey, Pacific Radio, screw this mess, I'm going back to Kamloops. This mountain here on my left is one I had to worry about, so now that I have passed it, um, I have less to worry about. It is quite bumpy. It's not, um, like, super bad or anything like that. We haven't had any, well, knock on wood. You know, I'm not going to say anything. Um... If I say something, then they'll probably just drop out of the sky. I would say we're over the Logan Lake, is that fair? Just approaching the town. So, you know what, we're going to call it 11 minutes, I think. We're going to call it 11 minutes. So, I'm expecting 22 minutes from now. So, 44. 1444 local. So I'm going to switch to Pacific Radio. Uh, Pacific Radio is... Do, 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 123375. Never done this before, but I don't think anyways. Pacific Radio, Cessna 172, Gulf Big Cross Tango. Aircraft calling Pacific Radio, Cessna, please. Pacific Radio with Cessna 172 Golf Victor Oscar Tango. Golf Oscar Oscar Tango Pacific Radio. Golf Victor Oscar Tango is about one mile south of Logan Lake, en route to Merritt, expecting Merritt at 1445 local time on the VFR flight plan. Copy that, can loops all altimeter two nine or eight three. So you'll be in in twenty one minutes. Your ETA on your flight plan is five minutes before that, so I'll adjust it. Anything else you need, sir? That's it. Thanks very much for your help, Mike Oscar Tango. You're welcome, have a good flight. Alright, back to ATF. I won't so bad. That person was very nice. Alright, where am I right now? Oh, hello. Don't like the big ones. So I am, oops, oh, what just happened? There we go. I am nearly halfway to Merritt from Logan Lake. Oh dear. That's good. It's fine, everything's fine. Honestly, this isn't, this turbulence is not bad. And honestly, I'm gonna break before the plane does, so I don't need to worry too much about it. It's just, like I say, this is my first solo cross country. Um, this is only my second cross country. Here's our plan for the approach into Merritt. I need to uh, cross the live side onto the dead side, descend on the dead side. I'm going to go around the town, back up toward the airport, cross from the... I need to descend to 3,500 feet, right? No, 3,600 feet, to do my inspection pass. From what I've read, taxiway Bravo at Merritt is gravel, so I'm going to try and stay off of that if I can. I'll be landing south to north, so... In Taxiway Alpha's on the north side, so we can roll for Alpha. Oh, I need to switch to Merritt traffic here pretty soon. Uh, where's the... Merritt traffic is 123.2. How far out would I say? I would I say I'm 5 miles? Yeah, about 10, 
five, ten miles northwest. All right, let's put the mirror traffic here. Not hearing anything. Let's make a call. Mirror traffic, Cessna 172 Golf Mix for Oscar Tango is about seven miles northwest of the aerodrome. Estimating ten minutes. Uh, going to do an inspection pass and a full stop. Mirror traffic, Cessna 172 Golf Mix for Oscar Tango. Hey, uh, Barrett Traffic, uh, helicopter JVZ is overhead 4,500 feet, doing some calibration work for a couple of minutes, then we'll be landing at the fuel pumps. Okay, so there's a helicopter at 4,500 feet, good to know. There's Barrett. I have officially made it. I can see the freeway running off south toward Hope. One day, one day I'll head down there. Although I don't know if I want to land at Hope. I think Hope is still like a grass runway, and I, w I would want to have more soft field practice before landing on an actual soft field. All right, I think I should start my descent here. Uh, so let's um, pull some power. Ooh, goodness! Can't see. The, I cannot see the aerodrome yet because there's a mountain in my way. The, air, the, high, the airport is literally just at the bottom. Never mind. I can see it. Running through four thousand. So this is where it gets dangerous because that helicopter was on final. I don't see the helicopter anywhere. Um, but I'm crossing the flight path essentially. Path, I don't see any traffic on final anywhere, or like on a long final. Almost down to 4,000 feet. Wow, that mountain is right there. <laughs> that mountain is so right next to the runway. How am I supposed to do this? It was way easier in Flight Simulator, I'm not going to lie. So, I'm on the live side, crossing over the dead side, just confirming the windsock. Yeah, definitely landing on 03. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself... I'm actually going to fly up the valley a ways. Uh, I'm at circuit height. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go up the valley a little ways. That's where I'm going. I have to climb up that, beyond that, on the way back. We'll gloss over that for now. Um, so I'm going to go out a little way to give myself some space to turn around and to get into the circuit here. I can't believe it, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. How crazy is that? The answer is very, don't ask silly questions. Double check the windsock. Where's the windsock? There it is, I see it. So the winds are out of the... Wait, winds blowing this way. Actually, winds are, winds are calm, I think. I think the winds are calm. The winds look pretty calm. All right, let's turn it around. Pull the power. We can begin our descent. Bit of a steep turn, that's okay. I am way too high right now, holy cow. Flaps 30. Alright, so super high right now, so I'm going to pull the power out and start dropping, aim for the numbers. Shuffle back over toward the runway a little bit. A little bit off, uh, bit off there. Oh, a little bit slow. Let's nose over, put some power in. That's a little better. Still quite high, so I'm going to pull the power back out. 65 is good. Didn't like glide a little bit. Alright, we've made the runway, power to idle. Bit of an uphill on this runway, so... Oh, yes! I made it. I made it. I friggin' made it. Mirror traffic, right traffic, tango is down and clear. Not entirely sure where I'm supposed to park. I find myself once again under the wing of Victor Oscar Tango. Um, you can actually see it now in spite of the light. Um, because it's probably one of the coolest places to be. But I'm in merit. I made it to merit. In one piece.
I kind of picked the wrong one. One way to land on, the, the wind socks are kind of deceiving. But, um, or did I? I don't know. Look, the point is that I just finished my first cross-country flight, so I'm just going to relax for a bit. I have a separate flight plan ready to go for the trip back, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, I can just file that whenever I'm ready to go. But, um, <laughs> I made it. <sighs> wow. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, I'm here in the FBO, I guess you could call it. Um, this is like a little building here at Merritt Airport. Um, yeah, it's kind of a nice little spot. Like, it's kind of very pleasant. I mean, maybe I'm just saying that because I literally just uh, landed here for the first time. I actually just talked to a, just talked to a guy who was um, from Korea, actually, and he's in Canada trying to get his commercial license. So I was talking with him for a few minutes randomly, and he was trying to go to Kamloops, but he was saying that... Uh, um, it was too smoky, but I was trying to tell him, actually, it's not too bad where it is, but long story short, um, yeah, super nice guy, so hopefully he can get his citizenship, he's working on getting his citizenship as well, and hopefully he can get his commercial license, so it was very cool. Nice to meet you, human, so have a safe trip, he's actually out there just doing FRAP checks right now. So yeah, it's, uh, whatever time it is, like quarter past three, I need to pick when I'm going to leave, because I have to file my flight plan to get back, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna. So they have like a little guest book here, kind of thing that I'm gonna sign, a little register thing. Uh, you can test my desk there. I'm gonna sign that, and then uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and do some checks and stuff. See if I suck up any grass off the runway, and uh, yeah, and then I'm gonna head back to Kamloops here a little bit. So here we go. Just quickly, um, I did not realize there was a flight after mine. I thought I had more time today. Uh, so I was hanging out here talking with my new friend and doing all this stuff and not realizing I had to actually not spend that much time here and hurry back. So I'm going to leave the cameras off for now to save battery. I don't know how long the back cameras are going to last. And um, I think there's a forest fire over there by Merritt now. Uh, so I'm going to leave as soon as possible and get back and then we'll talk about stuff later. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hi, it's Paul from the future. I should just explain a little bit more about what I was saying there. So when I originally booked the flight, and even up to the night before, there were no flights booked after mine. Uh, but sometime between the night before and me leaving, there was a flight booked after mine. And I had no idea until I get a text from Riley when I'm sitting in Merritt having a great old time. Uh, I get a text from Riley saying, hey, when are you coming back? Um, so it took me a while to get down to Merritt, but I made it back in about 20 minutes, uh, thanks to some tailwinds and flying quickly. Um, had to come in with a weird approach too, because there were some fire planes out to the west doing some work, so I had to have a weird approach coming in. Um, but long story short, I made it back, had a decent landing too, which I will show you now. Back to the video. So we're back. Um, we are back in Kamloops. I'm gonna try and put this airplane down here. All right, let's get her lined up. I'll make sure Cam is ready to close my flight plan. 65 knots is not too bad. Might be a little bit uh, a little fast, actually. Let me nose up a little bit. Alrighty. Cam is ready with Lewis Fire Guard 676 plus 2. Alright, 676 plus 2, Cam is ready. Hi there, just coming out uh, down the train seal. We're showing four miles back out of uh, 2,700 inbound for landing. There's three of us. Um, one sec here. Victor Oscar Tango is clear on echo. Victor Oscar Tango, Roger. Your flight plan is close. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Roger, you too. Ah, oh, made it. Hello. So, it's the night after my first, that my flight to Merritt that you just saw. And it's really sinking in just how big of a milestone it is. Like, you know, yeah, your first solo is a big milestone. Yeah, you know, passing your flight test or passing your written exam, they're big milestones. But that's not why you do that. You don't do your first solo for its own sake, right? Like, you do your solo and you do these tests and these exams to be able to do what I did today. Like, today was a huge milestone. It didn't really sink in until later. So, and I'm also really right now feeling just how privileged I am to even have the opportunity and have the chance to be in the position to be able to do it. Um, what an unbelievable day. And now the debate is, do I push through um, and try and get my private this year? Do I just spend the money, spend the time, and then, you know, be broke? Or do I kind of take a step back, slow it down, maybe try to get the private next year? I don't know. I'll have to see. That's a debate I'm having with myself right now. 
Um, comment below if you think I should, uh, what you think I should do, if I should get my private right away or I should, I should take my time. But, um, but yeah. Anyways, um, I'm gonna go now. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you in a month. Okay, bye. Hi, it's Paul from the future. There's one more thing. Another recent milestone shortly after my flight to Merritt is I went up with my first passengers, took Diane and Coco up on a flight, uh, mainly to see how Coco would do with flying. Um, and as you can see in the words of Blaine Edwards and Antoine Merriweather, he hated it. So yeah, we'll try again another time with some different earmuffs. Stay tuned.